Hello, my name is Austin Kennedy. I am a UGTA for the CE 353 course, that is your materials course. Um, so this is a video in response to the Muddiest Points survey that you have taken. I would like to thank those of you that take the, that survey. Your feedback is critical to us. So this is uh, the video concerning stress strain and Poisson's ratio. So stress is a crucial idea behind a lot of what we do in civil engineering. So if you're having difficulties with this one, please come see us in office hours, um, find help, YouTube videos, Google, whatever you need to do to understand stress. Um, stress is a pretty straightforward concept. It's just f the force per unit of area. It's all it is. You'll see right here we have um, the sigma, which is the symbol for stress, and it is force divided by the area that force is acting on. Um, so common units for that are PSI, pounds per square inch, and pascals, which is newtons per square meter. Um, so an example of finding force calculation, say that we have 100 pounds of force acting on a 3 inch squared um, area. You just have the 100 pounds divided by the 3 square inches, and you end up with 33 PSI. It's as simple as that. Um, so if you can remember this equation, you, you're good to go with stress. So strain, um, unlike stress, this is a ratio, which means it has no units. So whereas stress had units of PSI or Pascals, um, strain has no units at all. It's quite simply the ratio of change in length compared to the initial length. So here we have the change in length, and here's the initial length. Um, this is another pretty straightforward calculation. If you can remember this equation, you'll be able to calculate strain. Simple as that. Um, so what is happening with strain at an atomic level? So what we think of when we see strain, like if you think back to that steel lab that we did a couple of weeks ago, where you were able to see the elongation of the specimen, um, in order for that elongation to occur at the macro level, at the level we can see, there has to be um, an atomic, strain. there has to be strain at the atomic level too. So what's happening here is the bonds are stretching. So steel is made up of, of a structured um, system of atomic bonds, and those bonds are going to stress, or, or sorry, those bonds are going to stretch. And what's going to happen is that the interatomic spacing is going to increase, so it's going to stretch out, and the spacing is going to become greater, and that is going to manifest itself as the strain. The Hooke's Law, um, this relates stress, strain, and the elastic modulus. So this is a diagram I've taken from Dr. Underwood's notes. You can see here that as we apply these three different forces, we have resulting stress and resulting strain. So as the force is increasing, the stress will increase. You can see force per unit area. Greater force means greater stress. And as a result of the greater stress, we have a greater strain. So in this linear elastic region, as we increase the stress, um, the strain increases as well. And you see here that that slope in the elastic region is called the elastic modulus, which is the capital E. And that is represented here in this equation, which says elastic modulus is equal to stress over strain. And now this is Hooke's law right here, which relates stress and strain by a factor of this elastic modulus. So stress equals elastic modulus times strain. So Poisson's ratio. Um, this is just a coefficient that relates the transverse and the axial strains of a material. T 
Typically, you'll see steel is about 0.3, and concrete has a lower Poisson's ratio in the 0.1 to 0.2 range, um, depending on the mixture that you have. So what's going to happen here is that as, um, as a specimen is stretched in one direction, there's going to be an effect in the other direction. So as a, as a material experiences strain in the longitudinal direction, there's an effect in the lateral direction. Um, this is called Poisson's ratio. You can see as this specimen is elongated this way in the longitudinal direction, there is an effect in the lateral direction that says this is going to shrink. So think about volume being a constant. Um, if volume is constant and and a material is increased in one direction, it's elongated, then in order to keep the volume the same, there has to be a reduction in the other direction. So you can see that here. Um, you'll see it written commonly in a couple of different ways. Here we have Poisson's ratio, which is called either a mu or sometimes um, a V. You'll see it is a V quite commonly as well. Um, so that equals the negative, and this negative sign is important to remember. And I'll show you why in an example on the next slide. So Poisson's ratio equals negative change in transverse strain divided by the change in axial strain or you see it as lateral over long however you remember it best for me it's easiest to just remember lat over long when thinking about Poisson's ratio but for some people transverse over axial gives them a better description of what exactly is going on um, so this is Poisson's ratio. How to use Poisson's ratio in the context of a problem. Um, here's an example. So a cylinder of steel with a radius of 10 millimeters and a length of 150 millimeters is pulled in tension with a 12 kilonewton force. Assuming steel has an elastic modulus of 200 gigapascals and a Poisson's ratio of 0 0.3, determine the elongation of the cylinder and reduction in diameter. So for the first part, we're going to break this into two parts. Um, we want to find the elongation of the specimen. Um, first, we need to, def to find the area so we can find the stress. This area is just 0.25 pi radius squared. Oh, apologies. Um, 0.25 radius squared. And you see that radius was 10 millimeters. Um, so that gives us 78.540 millimeters squared. So the change, sorry, so the, the stress here is equal to the force divided by the area. We can see the force is 12 kilonewtons. I'm going to write this out fully as 12,000 newtons. And we're going to divide that by the area of 78.540 millimeters squared. And here we get 152.79 megapascals. Um, note that the units here is what makes this work out into megapascals. As you can think about this as being uh, 78.540 meters squared to the negative um, 10 to the negative 6th on the bottom, which will give you megapascals. Um, so this is just a units trick right here. You can remember that newtons per millimeter squared gives you megapascals. Um, so here's Hooke's law again, which states stress equals strain times elastic modulus. Elastic modulus was given in the problem. And we can rearrange this equation to solve for stress. So we're assuming that this is in the linear elastic zone and you can see that, str that strain equals stress over elastic modulus. So we have the 152.79 megapascals divided by 200 gigapascals. So I'm going to convert this gigapascals into megapascals. Um, that's a simple conversion. Multiply it by 10 to the third. And here we have 
0 0.76395 times 10 to the negative third. Now remember, strain has no units here. And so you see, previously we have units. Here there are no units. And to find the elongation of the specimen of the cylinder, um, we are going to rearrange the strain equation to isolate the change in length. So change in length equals strain times length. Um, this is length initial. So we have the point zero 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 seven six three nine five times 150 millimeters will give us 0 0.115 millimeters. Now this is not a very large strain, is it? It's, it's pretty small, so that would indicate to us that our assumption that it was linearly elastic um, should hold true, especially for steel. Okay, so that is the elongation in the um, longitudinal direction. Now to solve for the change in diameter, we're going to need to use Poisson's ratio. So this quite simply um, here is the definitions of Poisson's ratio from the previous slide. Um, I like thinking about it loud over long, just easy for me to remember. So we're going to isolate because we've already solved for the longitudinal strain. So what we need to do is solve for this lateral strain. We do that by multiplying this over, bringing over the negative sign, and here we have the lateral strain is equal to the negative Poisson's ratio times longitudinal strain. So we have negative 0 0.3 times 0 0.00076395, which gives us negative 0.00022912. Notice there's still no units here. Poisson's ratio and strain both have no units. So, to solve for the strain in the lateral direction, specifically, um, well, to solve for the change in diameter specifically, we need to multiply the strain in the lateral direction times the initial diameter. So here we have the um, the strain, the lateral strain, 0 0.00022912 multiplied by the 10 millimeters um, and that will give you negative 0 0.00022912. Um, I just realized I've made a mistake on this slide. I meant to put radius here, or sorry, I meant to put diameter here, not radius. Um, so that's why we have the 0.25 and that's why we have the 10 millimeters here. So pretend that I put diameter here, not radius. <laughs> Alright, so using Poisson's ratio we have now solved the problem. We have the change in diameter. So you see here that the change in diameter is actually pretty small. Um, compared to the elongation, right? And notice this negative sign here. So this negative sign is important. What this negative sign indicates is that there's being a reduction in the diameter, um, which makes sense. If you think about something stretching in one direction, it needs to shrink in the lateral direction. So if it's increasing longitudinally, it will have to shrink laterally um, to keep volume constant. Um, so make sure that you do not forget this negative sign and that you carry it through on your calculations.